Okay, so I left off in the last video on chapter 10, but I already tried to make a video a few minutes ago, and I was debating whether to do chapter 11 or 12. And I looked, I tried to do 11, but 11 was really useless. So I'm going to chapter 12, which hopefully will have useful information. The shopping brain and the in-store marketing. In this chapter, we will go through understanding why and how we shop, exploring the multi-sensory nature of shopping, identifying different shopping styles based on personality traits and gender, ooh, that's useful, discovering ways to design the shopping environment and maximize impact. Let's begin. The impact of brands, products, and advertising all come together at the point of sale in the shopping experience. In this chapter, we look at what brain science and neuromarketing have to tell us about shopping in brain. I'm so dyslexic. Have to tell us about the shopping brain in its natural habitat. A physical store. In the next chapter, we look at shopping in the online virtual world, where some things remain the same, but others are quite different. Understanding the mind of the shopper. Shopping is a complex experience for the human mind. It begins with conscious goals and expectations. That's true. Like going into Target and saying, I'm going to go buy an iPod. And then you see a bunch of options. Let's, let's keep reading. Shopping is a complex experience for the human mind. It begins with a conscious goal. These goals and expectations are derived from two sources. Actual personal experience with products and brands. Learned associations required through advertising, marketing, and the experience of others. So that means when you see advertisements on TV of a perfect looking pizza, you're going to expect to go to a certain place and get that perfect looking pizza. But when you get it, it's not going to look like the pizza you saw on television. So your expectations are too high. That's what it's saying. In the real world, as compared to the virtual world, which we cover in the next chapter, shopping is a physical experience that requires physical movement to accomplish. This seemingly obvious fact is important because the human brain is in ways optimized by evolution to be good at navigating through space to acquire objects in the environment that meet the body's basic needs like food and shelter. Not only are we good at it, but we're motivationally driven to it. We draw intense satisfaction from seeking out and finding the things we want and need. Shopping is the modern equivalent to hunting and gathering. Although directed by conscious goals, it utilizes the same non-conscious processes that were selected by in our ancestors' brains and passed down to our modern minds. The ability to notice novelty and and similarity in the environment, the motivation to approach things that appear good for us and avoid things that don't. The tendency to purchase our goals in the face of obstacles and interrupt and interruptions and the ability to choose rapidly among alternatives that involve unclear uncertainty and risk. Shopping a multi-sensory experience. We shop in the same way as our ancestors hunted and gathered. That's true. By searching through physical space, we use environmental cues following into our brains through all sensory pathways to guide us towards achieving our goals. Retail stores and other shopping environments, for example, showrooms, Trigger all the shopping senses that impact the shopping experience through those triggers. These sensory experiences may be deliberately activated by the retailer or may occur by chance, but every experience is absorbed by the shopper's brain. 
either consciously or non-consciously, and has the potential to increase or decrease the likelihood of purchasing being made. Neuromarketing research has begun to focus on these sensory aspects of shopping. Neuromarketing firms have arisen. Arisen? A-R-I-S-E-N? Arisen? I don't know, honestly. That specialize in testing sensory effects and advertising retailers on sensory best practices. Here are some results and implications across the five basic senses. Sight is critically important to shoppers in retail environment. Package or product design displays signage, colors, type styles, whatever the fuck that is, and other visual elements can be used to attract attention, prime the shopper, fast track a decision, create positive emotional connections, Ooh. or aid rapid recondition, recognition and ease the processing. Touch is particularly important when people are shopping for items that come in contact with the body, such as towels, ooh, clothes, health, and umbrella, like umbrellas, briefcases, handbags, wallets, wait, health, beauty products, I mean, as well as products that are carried around or held like umbrellas, briefcases, handbags, and wallets. Researchers have found that touch have surprisingly priming effects. For example, the weight, texture, and hardness of touching objects can impact our later judgment. Really, that's interesting. So the heaviness of an object or the lightness of an object could make you want to come back and buy that object. That's very interesting. Remember that. Taste it is important with foods and beverages, especially when the purchase can be challenged by high cost or lack of similarity. They keep saying preliminarity. I can't fucking pronounce that word because I'm dyslexic. I'll spell it though. F a m i l i a r i t y, Felimitar Similarity is what I'm going to say because they're the same meaning. Come back up screen. There we go. In-store taste testing is a proven way to reduce risk and activity goals. Activate goals, which may lead to a trial purchase. Ooh. I'll stop doing that. Both the display and person managing the taste testing have been found to prime the customer. Interesting. Creating positive or negative expectations that can significantly impact the taste experience. Let me give an example of that. When you go to Costco and you leach all the stands, the food stands, so you have a full dinner, that's what they mean. The person who's doing the stand can either be a dick or they can be nice and that's what they mean by a negative or positive experience of wanting to buy that item or it can taste really good and they want to buy it. Smell. This is a true one. I just have to... Smell is increasingly exploited by retailers using pipe, piped in fragrances to trigger associations and activate goals related to a purchase. Let me reread that so you can remember. No, I don't have to. You can rewind it. For example, a supermarket may dispense and smell of freshly baked bread. An infant apparel store may disperse baby powder through the air ducts. What? What? So their stores have like air fresheners or smells of their products so you feel you remember their products and you buy their products in their store that is brilliant that is 
fucking brilliant. All right, okay, okay, I'm, I'm going to keep going. Trigger association. Bleh. For example, the supermarket made us fence the smell of freshly baked Such as be beach smell as swimwear section. Scent marketing has become a big business with a specialized agencies claiming clients across the wide range of environments, including banks, auto road shows, auto showrooms, fitness centers, movie theaters, hotels, grocery stores, medical offices, cruise ships, and airplanes. I completely believe that. Sound. Sound is also receiving more attention as a means of activating positive associations and prime for a purchase. For example, a supermarket in the United Kingdom placed our placed four French and four German wines matched for wine style and price on its shelves. A tape deck on the top of the shelving unit played French music on even days and German music on odd days. On French music days, 77% of wine purchased was French. On German days, 73% of wine was purchased by Germans. Germans. Sorry, Germans aren't really that loud. More abrupt. Background music marketing appears to face more resistance among shoppers than scent marketing, in part because it's often consciously perceived as invasive and inappropriate. Oh, these examples highlight the wide ver so smell works better than sound. These examples highlight the wide variety of ways that sensory inputs can impact retail shoppers' environments. Neuromarketing testing is particularly well suited to evaluating these sensory effects on the shopping experience because many of them occur below the level of conscious awareness. So sound works, but it's not as good as smell. Okay. Shopping and goal pursuit. As we discussed in Chapter 7, oh, I'm out of time. Well, I'll continue on this tomorrow, and I'll have a lot more information tomorrow. So bye, everyone. Hope you enjoyed this video. Like, rate, and subscribe. And leave any comment you want to leave. It doesn't have to be nice. Any comment works. Bye. Uh.